Well, it's obvious that uh, the economy is being stressed right now. Inflation is at record levels. You've got high gas prices. Seems the gas prices continue to tick upwards. We'll talk about that a little bit later on this morning as well to get your reaction. But here with Springfield's Morning News, I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. And yesterday, the Illinois Chamber of Commerce, they had their annual event where they had a roundtable discussion about future energy policies. Uh, and an interesting conversation there. We'll unpack some of that for you. Uh, in the future, but uh, they also had the president of the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank there. Charles Evans was uh, providing some some context to how the economy is performing and a better understanding of why interest rates are important and what the Federal Reserve is doing about interest rates, especially with high inflation and things that seem to be out of their control, uh, especially the tight labor market, which uh, there seem to be some acute problems. Uh, so interesting conversation to be had uh, and something I think that the more people understand the role of the central bank, the Federal Reserve, which is a quasi public private entity uh, that uh, is not in the government yellow pages. You can't you can't look up Federal Reserve and find it in the uh, government yellow pages if we even have yellow pages anymore. Uh, so, I, you know, the bank is obviously uh, controversial for some who who understand monetary policy and the ideas of fiat currency uh, and how we got off the gold standard uh, decades ago. Gosh, what was that during Nixon's time? Uh, and how the Federal Reserve notes uh, the the U.S. dollar is. Uh, in a way, uh, in a constant struggle to uh, bring uh, hedge money across the the world to make the dollar the the go to reserve currency, and uh, some speculating that hey, we we've we've fought wars over uh, the threats to the U.S. dollar being the the global reserve currency. But regardless of all of that, the ins and outs of that, the the, the fact remains: the Federal Reserve is the United States central bank, and their policies directly impact your pocketbook, your savings, your ability to borrow uh, at uh, decent rates. So um, just a little bit of context here. Before the pandemic, we had pretty historic low rates uh, for, for interest that the Fed would ultimately dictate. Uh, and uh, then we saw a drastic increase in the interest rates after more inflation was was realized, uh, historic amounts of inflation, and we went from a quarter of a percentage point for the Fed's rate to, in just seven months, 3.25% of an interest rate. So that's 300 basis points, and you'll hear Charles Evans uh, talk a bit about that yesterday when he was talking with the Illinois Chamber of Commerce's Todd Meisch. And again, here is uh, just some of that conversation here, uh, brief highlights from that 20-minute uh, discussion. 3.7%, but when it was a little bit higher, we would hear a lot about labor shortages. And, and it seems focused in so many manufacturing areas, Outside of large metropolitan areas, sort of exurb, small market, rural areas, manufacturing facilities are located, and workers have different attitudes these days. Um, a lot of the labor, some of the labor force is, is workers who are aging but haven't decided to retire. They may, may well work in, well into their 60s, and then all of a sudden, in a COVID environment, having put up with a lot of stuff, they're kind of like, I'm not interested in overtime. Overtime's important. Uh, I'm not interested in working the weekend shift. Well, the weekend shift's important, especially when demand is so high, goods demand is high, production's at capacity. And so those are the shortages that then you talk to the, you know, um, you know OEMs, the larger producers, and they're kind of going, I can't get the parts. That's the shortage. Well, that part is because some other worker didn't show up to finish something. So labor is running throughout this story. If you look at the median participant who submitted projections for where our federal funds rate will end at the end of this year, there are only two meetings, um, they're looking for 125 basis points of increase. So in two meetings, how do you do 125 basis points of increase? Well, you, you can sort of make that choice yourself, right? Right, so inflation's high right now. We need a more restrictive setting of monetary policy and 
as of last March, we were basically still at zero. The federal funds rate was at the zero to a quarter percent target range. And so we had quite a ways to go. And we have increased interest rates by three percentage points, 300 basis points. That is an enormous increase as of our last FOMC meeting. To put it in perspective, back in 1994 to 95, I remember being in exactly this ballroom when I think Governor Angel gave an economic outlook speech at about that time and said that there were problems. Um, the Fed in 12 months increased the interest rate by 300 basis points, and it was referred to as the biggest bloodbath in the bond market of all time. That was in 1994, 95. We have just done 300 basis points in seven months. We're tightening monetary policy. I suspect that the unemployment rate is gonna to begin to creep up as the effect of higher interest rates work their way into the mortgage market and other credit activities. So again, that was uh, Charles Evans. He is the president of the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank, hinting that uh, we're gonna see uh, the interest rates increase uh, maybe upwards to 125 basis points, which would be 1.25%. Uh, an actual, you know, moving it up to um, an extra 1.25 percentage points. So uh, that, he says, also is something that's uh, likely to bring about higher inflation. And we did get a number yesterday, uh, U.S. job uh, list claims, they actually surged more than expected yesterday. And uh, we've been hearing about this for several weeks, especially after uh, negative GDP growth for the first half of this year and uh, expectations it'll be slow growth moving forward into the rest of this year. Uh, plus, you've got inflation that's through the roof and uh, a whole host of other issues that are all uh, in this, this cauldron of the economy. Uh, causing uh, some pressures to to kind of burst through the seams here. Uh, and uh, we've been hearing that uh, the unemployment rate could very well be a significant issue uh, in the uh, in the near future, possibly bringing about a recession. And if we have that, then uh, you can imagine, uh, as we've seen in previous recessions, without uh, Federal Reserve, uh, uh, influence in the economy through either quantitative easing, which is just adding zeros onto their spreadsheet, uh, devaluing your currency. Um, if we don't see that, then we could very well see uh, significant disinvestment and people not willing to expand their business and just stagnation. Uh, and uh, that's not necessarily what we want to see, uh, especially from the United States, as we want to be the go to economy in the world. Uh, so all of this, of course, is very important. I think it's something that we all have to constantly be cognizant of, uh, because if, if we're not and we get caught off guard, then we can't prepare. So uh, again, interest rate hikes on the way, that's going to bring some uncertainty in the labor market, and you're going to uh, likely see an increase in the unemployment rate if those interest rates do indeed inch upwards. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. And we can always take your calls live here as we are broadcasting on WMAY and you're on the air. Good morning. Morning. Morning, Greg. Hey. I, feel by, I feel by true definition we're definitely already in a recession. Uh, number two, I believe this is uh, 2008 2.0 coming at us real fast. And uh, they're going to be switching to a uh, digital dollar here soon. So this fiat currency we're currently used to will soon be non-existent. Well, it'll be fiat digital currency uh, because uh, one thing that people uh, have to understand about digital currency, the really kind of trendy one right now is Bitcoin. That seems to have splashed onto the scene, what, 2011 or so. And what was so attractive about Bitcoin is it's decentralized, meaning there's no central bank that controls it. And it's finite, meaning there's only going to be about, what, I think like 19 million Bitcoin mined or something like that. So once it gets to that 19 million, there's not going to be any more Bitcoin. The Federal Reserve and other central banks across the world are looking at their own digital currencies. And you got to imagine if the Fed gets into that market with a digital currency controlled by a central bank, that takes away the decentralization attraction people have with cryptocurrency. It also could very well mean that they could just make it a fiat digital currency where they can add more zeros to the balance sheet easier. Yep, and uh, I agree with everything you said there. And not financial advice, but people may want to take a look into XRP. 
Thank you, Greg. Well, that's another one, yeah. Uh, and these are, of course, uh, all financial decisions you have to make on your own. We're not uh, financial advisors here, just uh, those who are... You know, sitting back and uh, reading the tea leaves, so to speak. Appreciate the call on that. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News.